Sunday 19 July 2015 was meant to be a day of joy as students of the Department of Philosophy, Faculty of Arts, University of Benin, Ubal Campus had joined one of their lecturers at Thanksgiving service mass inside the campus. Two of the students, Rita Awele Halim and F.A. Esther Olakpa, were on their way home to get set for the reception party. Both girls are 200 level students of the department, best friends and roommates. Just in front of the main gate, a reckless army driver on a high speed hit the two guests. Rita eventually died while FA has fast recovered and awaiting discharge from the University Health Center. As at the time of filing this report, the circumstance leading to the accident was not clear as there are so many versions from eyewitnesses. The student union government of the institution led students in their thousands to protest the death on Tuesday, 21st July 2015 and vowed to continue for the next one week until the government does something to avert a future reoccurrence. On Thursday, July 16th, 2015, there was to be a test by one of the lecturers for the 200-level students of philosophy. A way they moved the motion that the test be moved to Tuesday 21st, which the lecturer obliged. But rather than the test, it was a protest over the death of Rita Whaley and the entire Uniband students. Yeah, well, my name is Lisa, actually. I'm on the same level with Lisa that died. She, she was my very good friend. As I last she was in my house, I actually could stay together. She came, she was like, I'm hungry, you know. She was my very good friend, so so smooth. She comes to my house most times that we, that we don't have class. She just went with her friend that she had accident with together. We would just pay, I would just the best one to eat together. And then when I heard the news on Sunday morning that she is dead, oh my god, I couldn't just believe it. I was not actually in the service where they had the, the test giving mass. But I went to my own church and when I heard it, I was like, I shouted. I couldn't believe it. It was only that they had to run out of skelter to charge my phone to confirm me. And finally, when I confirmed it, I cried like I never cried before. So I was just, just crying and I realized how much I was going to be okay. what, What's the identity of the other person? She's very fine. And there's more that she's there. She's not there. She's very fine and okay. They've already done the CT scan and the X-ray for her and they confirmed that there's no internal bleeding that she might, okay. she might be discharged to go to the same she department, same level. level. What's her name? If we, I am if we Esther. Thank you. Okay. Um, I'm Okwara Daniel. I'm um, one of my close friends. I've known past the first one, one level. I'm the first one, one level. And she's a very kind person. She's praying for those two weeks with her. We just get to know her. And hearing that she's here, that like, she did devastating and heartbreaking. I was, we, I saw her in church, just 10 minutes before that she was dead. She had an accident. So later, two hours time that we got to know that she was dead. We saw, we saw in church. We agreed to meet in our lecturer's house around the world for the reception, for the Thanksgiving we for. On, on getting home, for me to just eat and later sleep, come back to the reception. I received a call from the security department telling me that I am clear with the family. They told me that some of our students were here. I had to do what I was doing. Then. I had to run back to school. Get into the department where they had to they delay me hours, but they don't want to disclose anything to me. They told us things that she was as in the center of the family. I wrote down to the president, to buy a class bed, and some other people that from my house, the, our neighbors, person. When we got there, they delayed us for like 10 minutes again. And then the came, the dean of students was there with SUG, the deputy of students, and they did not know that she was dead, that our real editor was dead, that she could not make it. Now, the, the, later on, I started hearing the news on how the how she died. I was was bringing different stories, but the man that actually brought her from the hospital told us everything that happened. That she. Uh, when, when, the, when the car hit her, when the truck hit her, she was bleeding on the floor. She was still alive. Then, then all of a sudden, a man that was inside, inside the school compound that saw what happened, saw the negligence of the army, came drove outside. 
imagine you can imagine the distance from the little beside the school, drove outside, have to wait for cars to pass, then later came outside, drove down to the Apostolic Church to pick them on the floor. Imagine the distance and no hospital was open then. The test was closed, um head center, I'm not sure the I'm not sure the man that even got her carried her carried her we knew about her center. So he took her to sit himself, no mean Chapelet Road. Imagine the distance from the bomb of Chapelet Road. Before she got there, she told her that the, the, the doctors there said they cannot see her. They left her. They they found her back to center hospital. On the way there, she, she gave up the post. She died. So the levels of our doctors, the UBT, skewed our way. We shot the man, shot the man. Even I can't give a lie. Hey, Kondai. Remember her best for her kindness. She was, was all loving. Everybody loved her. She spent those two minutes with her. We fall in love with her. She's, she's free. So she's, she's not proud. That was why I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of person that don't like her. So when you're you proud towards me, I'll just leave you. But the very first day I talked to her, the veterans, they just started to talk to her. And how close we are. We really, 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 really close. And the end that she died, I don't know. I, I myself, I can't. I can't think straight anymore because this is how beautiful Sometimes we are always in a hurry. That's human. 
So, uh, to avoid such situations, do you have confidence that the government will... Yeah, yeah, we, we, we really hope they do, we really hope they do, because we give them a seven-day ultimatum. Okay? All we need there is, 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 a, is a speed bump, you know. So many agitators have made about provision of the speed bump, and the government were like, it's, it's, it's a highway, you don't put speed bumps on highway, but our, our speed on the highway, our is on the highway, but our speed on the highway, then you should be able to make provisions to, to reduce the speed rate for the day. So that was what our, our protest today was all about, preparing the government to, to put speed bumps or take whatever measures it is to reduce speed for the day. But this will be like the second phase of the day. For the past six years, not less than three to four students have lost their lives here trying to cross the express on their way to or from classes. A large number of students reside across the road in an area referred to as BDPA. BDPA is the second largest host community of Uniben students after Ekosodin. Yet, the government has never considered it necessary to construct speed brakes or pedestrian bridges, perhaps, because the students never reacted to those there as they did Rita Wele Halim. The response by the university led by his vice chancellor professor Osasiri Uruwense to the students' protest is worthy of note and a sign that the University of Benin indeed has a father figure as his vice chancellor. Professor Osasiri was able to convince the students that the university would swing into action immediately and that was exactly what happened as the school began a construction of speed brakes the very next day and that has been completed along with the provision of a zebra crossing. It is hoped that the federal government will reciprocate the peace action of the students and good gesture of the university at making speed breaks by immediately starting the construction of a modern and attractive pedestrian bridge at the university main gates. The student union government led by its president, Comrade Raymond Omoribe, and vice president, Comrade Aisha Kanabe, must also be commended for their dedication and positive fighting spirit.
Some students of the Department of Philosophy share their thoughts in a tribute to Rita. Ernest Henry, age of four, 100 level student, titled his The Long Rain. It reads, The first light broke and the darkness over the skies shattered, and so this solemn day awoke. It seemed all strange even at first glance. But though it was morning, the sun not once did it ever shine, did so ever rise, and the shield of the morning lasted an hour too long. But the singing of the birds above still rang, and the white echelons filled the skies. And so we concluded this solemn day indeed was day, though it seemed too very nightly indeed. Then the news came, and all that was left of the day went sour. But once our ears did stiffen with the cold, and our eyes didn't blink as we stood in awful shock. For the singing of the birds had all of a sudden stopped, and the white echelons had long been gone, and the skies did weep, and weep, non-stop. And time had frozen in silent motion, for it's right now more nightly than it ever was in day. For still it rains, for the starless sky is above. The day's been long, very long with that. And I tell you about this very awkward day on the other side. <laughs> Messi Sandra, 400 level student, titled her as Death. It is a common destiny of man to live and die, but we are not all destined to die the same day. Death is a drama in which all of us have a role to play, and in the drama, there are no guests, no messenger, no representatives, and no one takes another's place. Even if another one dies in someone else's steel, it doesn't mean the person's death is taken away. Everyone must assume his own death himself. No one is too young, too old to die, but as soon as man is born, he's old enough to die. As all men were created without their consent, so in death they are taken without their consent. All men feel the cold hands of death, and it does not take into account a person's position, race, sex, color, wealth, or religion. The innocent smile of a child cannot stop. The seductive beauty of a woman can equally not stop. The robust strength of an athlete or warrior can neither advance it, nor can the wisdom of scholars or the piety of the monks put an end to it with miss. <laughs> So many persons have died unnoticed and uncelebrated, but many leave behind their prints in the sand of time, so that Rita Awele Halim has done too. Her death did not go in vain, but her death, many would be saved. Her death will forever create that emotional gap in the hearts of friends, colleagues, and most especially family members. But it is hoped they find comfort and consolation in the resurrection hope in the book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter 24, verse 15. The Apostle Paul says, And I have hope toward God, which hope these men also look forward to, that there is going to be a resurrection of both the righteous and the unrighteous. I ain't coming back. It's goodbye, friends. And goodbye, folks. I'm heading for the city, and that's my home. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Ooh. And goodbye, mama. Please don't cry. See, I can't stay. No money, just hopes and dreams. 